Okay, guys, we are here today to tackle the legendary beasts that hide behind these big steel Metroid-like doors. Now, if you were playing this game without use of the internet, you would pretty much learn about these ancient Pokemon or these legendary Pokemon through the uh, history classes at the Academy. But going to the history classes kind of felt too tedious for streaming. So after I collected all the Pokemon and finished up the decks, I decided to just Google where you get these Pokemon. And um, turns out that there are, I think, three behind these shrines. And you had to pull all those stakes out of the ground that we were finding. So I did all that tedious work off camera. And today, we're just going to focus on catching these little beasties. So buckle up, sit tight. Let's do this thing. Welcome back, everybody, to more Pokemon Violet. We are ready to try catching these little buggers. Now, I've got to figure out what to do about positioning, because I'm pretty sure at this point, all my Pokemon here... Volcarona's at level 100. The rest are pretty high level, too, and I'm pretty sure their IVs and EV... Or their EVs are maxed out. Not IVs, but their EVs are maxed out. So I'm pretty sure that it would be quite simple for me to one-shot these guys so i've got to be a little careful here let's just go ahead and reach out faint sound is coming from within the shrine will you touch the shrine yes touch Or bang. <laughs> Look at this guy. All right, Houndstone. We don't want to faint it, so let's be careful. Um, from the best I could tell online, the three legendary that we're going to catch today are uh, a Chinese influence. Which is neat because I don't know anything about Chinese culture and I would like to learn going forward in the future. I don't know a lot about many cultures outside of my own to be completely fair. Which says more about me than it does anybody else, you know. But, um... Although this music sounds Arabian, I'm pretty sure that's incorrect and I'm gonna get cancelled for saying that, but... Again, not Mr. World Knowledge over here. I'd love to see a, a region based on China. Maybe that's where we're going after Paldea. And this is just kind of a hint towards it. I don't know. Maybe I should go back and take those history classes at the Academy and see why these Pokemon were locked up. Oh, this music's going hard. There was a guy. I forgot his name. Austin something or another. But he made up some codes that you can use for trading with people to, to try and get the version exclusive Pokemon. I still need to get a fire Tauros from one of my friends. I need to get uh, Miraidon's counterpart data in my Pokedex. And then just these three guys, and I think that's... They'll be 100% complete decks. The hatred of those who perished by the sword long ago 
has clad itself in snow and become a Pokemon. Huh. Seems like some deep lure there. Deep lore. Filled in a page. But you know what? Now I've got to find the other one. Oh, that's a really pretty sunset. Okay, map. I don't remember where the other shrine is. I think it's behind a waterfall. Hmm. One of them is behind a waterfall. Probably best if I just look it up real quick. There it is. Do, uh, nope, don't need to heal up. But I do want to save just in case we have an oopsie. The faint sound is coming from within the shrine. Will you touch the shrine? Yes. What comes wandering out? Whoa! It's the... Uh, some sort of snail? It looks pretty rad. You're awesome. There are a lot of uh, really good YouTube channels where people do remixes for video game music. Some of them are really good. Let's see. Hmm. Everybody I have just going to use attacks. I did not bother because I'm stupid putting status moves on anybody. Let's see if Surf will knock you out. I hope not. Oh good, it did next to nothing. What Megahorn can do. Oh, snapped out of his confusion. Uh oh. Son of a whore! At least there's that. Not at 100% health anymore. Which will make things 2% easier. We got one boop in. And it snapped out of confusion. Yay, it didn't faint. We might, though. We broke free. Got him with only one screw up. 
Take it. It drains the life force from vegetation, causing nearby forests to instantly wither and fields to turn barren. Hmm, let's see. The other one was by a waterfall. Can't I remember where on the map? No. There's no way I will remember. I'll just have to uh go back to my web browser and look. You're so well hidden. This one was hard to find. What in the Minecraft is that thing? Vessel of Ruin. I'm really happy that I had the foresight to buy 999 Pokeballs a while back. <sighs> while I had the money to do so. I'm pretty well stocked up on items too, because I went last night and I bought a ton of ingredients. I think I made sure that I had at least 10 or 11 of every ingredient for making sandwiches. Because um, I wanted to do the water encounter sandwich. That way I could find uh, the water Tauros. Found two, one for me, one for Tyler. Thumping tantrum, pitching his baby fits. Going to confuse him again. Club music. Do I have to forget my tiredness? I didn't get a lot of sleep. I went to bed before the sun came up yesterday, and I woke up well after 4.30 after the sun had set. Uh, I didn't see the sun at all. Now, I was not making that same mistake today. So, I made it a point to get up and get some sun. Throat chop? I don't have a throat. Please don't faint. Oh, it doesn't affect you. Interesting.
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, we got two boobs. I wondered which one of the four were going to give me the most trouble. Hey, yeah! It's you. Ace and mortal. Mortar? Mort mortar? Mortal? The bowl and the stick that you grind stuff into. Ah, I thought we had him for sure that time. Ruination. It's a word I've heard before, but I'm not right sure what it is. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> You're gonna run out of those eventually, pal. Oh crap, if it runs out of it'll start hurting itself. Oh, there you go, Skelleridge. Um, I think it's time we confuse our friend again. Just leaves one more to go. I'm gonna pull up the thing real quick. See where it's located. <laughs> where is this bad boy located? Really? Nah. That's not where it is. Where's the shrine? North Providence, Providence to the east.
It slowly brings its exceedingly heavy head down upon the ground, splitting the earth open with huge fissures that run over 160 feet deep. Huh. It's going to be in the waterfall over there, or at the top of the waterfall. So we just need to climb up. Fly across. It's going to be in this little cave. This was actually the first one I was going to do, and it's ironic that it ends up being the last. I don't know if there's any specific order to them or not. I've just been doing them by the order that the guide I looked up said. And touch. It's a little goldfish. Beads through it. Oh, it sprang up. Oh, it's going to play that game, eh? It confused me. I saw the Pokeball hovering and thought it was a crit catch. Fire water? What are you? Might as well go ahead and heal now because I can't do anything else. Don't you swagger me. I'm the one who confuses you. Yep. Yeah. Watch this. This one be just absolutely impossible to catch. Didn't know you could become paralyzed from bounce. It's the twin. One little sliver of health left. Oh. 
buddy. That was an ordeal. The envy accumulated within curved beads that sparkle multiple conflicts has clad itself in fire and become a Pokemon. Ah. Okay. So I was going to try and record today's episode all at once but uh yesterday was a pretty rough day uh, didn't get a lot of sleep and i tried to do too much on too little sleep and it made me really sick um as you guys know i have sleep apnea and even with the CPAP machine, I'm not getting the best sleep in the world. But I did go ahead and catch the three legendaries. And what I wanted to do today is I wanted to go back into the game and I wanted to do anything that I may have missed. Um, as far as post-game content goes... I went ahead and leveled up my two dogs, my boss, Stiff and Houndstone, to 100. Um, I did a handful of raids last night off camera. I unlocked six and seven star raids. Here are some of the critters that I got from the five and six star raids. This guy, Garnacle, was impossible. The psychic one, I ended up you are gonna go five or six, five or six times, you know, online with people. Uh, Tyler asked me to catch him a Charizard. Um, this is a timed event that they're doing. You have to be post league, post, post league. Like you have to be at the absolute end of the game. You have to have done all the extra stuff too. Um, but I, I nabbed it because uh, it will go away. <sighs> but I think I've done just about everything I can do with Pokemon Violet here. I have all the past Pokemon ready to go to home. Um, and it's funny because in Pokemon Go, they just released Vivolian. Um, and it's interesting the way they did it. It's based on the postcard uh, system that they have in there. Hmm. If you pin three postcards from a region to your book, then uh, Scatterbug, I forgot his name, will appear for that region. So that's how they're doing the different Revolian. Um, we have everybody here. Now all of these uh these Pokemon here I got off the internet. I'm gonna replace them. When Tyler gets to the end of the game, I'm gonna have him catch them for me and uh we'll put them in the Pokedex that way. Up until now, all the Pokemon in my collection have been caught by me personally, but it's getting to the point where it's becoming impossible or going to become impossible to complete the decks with just Pokemon that I've caught. So I'm going to have to start making a few exceptions. And um, I'm assuming that uh, Tyler will always play with me. If not, then I'll have to rely on other people. I'll always have friends, hopefully, that play these games and are willing to trade with me and whatnot. That would be ideal. But you never know. I woke up just a few minutes ago. It's just, uh, just after 10 a.m. And I was looking on Twitter, looking at the news. <laughs> I'm going to be yawning like this the whole time. I apologize. 
not to I'm making some changes and I'm not gonna be just downing a ton of caffeine when I first wake up I've got my water and um, so it's gonna be harder for me to get going every day without just that shot of caffeine immediately in the morning but after 25 years they are retiring Ash and Pikachu. I know. Huge, huge news. They're going to keep the anime going. They're not going to stop making Pokemon. Um, but, um, it's hard to believe. All this time, I've wanted them to either age him up, advance his story, um, or just stop using the character altogether. And now that they are, want to see him go. As you are all aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldea exists in the heart of our region. The area inside this crater is called Area Zero, and research of its geological strata and material composition has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. It was long believed that a certain something rested at the bottom of this mysterious crater. What exactly was believed to rest in the depths of the Great Crater inside Area Zero? Pokemon Center? A Snorlax. That's yeah. Some believe that, th that a treasure more valuable than anything else in the world rested in the depths of the Great Crater. So much for dreams of treasure hunting, though, as a lab has been built in those very same depths. Oh, and before I forget, you would all do well to remember that the Great Crater and Area Zero are both off-limits to all those who have... To all but those who have official business there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, um. I uh, went ahead and finished all the other courses. A lot of the other classes. We're just teaching you how to play Pokemon, basically. Now they're all set to midterms. We're focusing on history today. So we can get some of the lore. Dun, dun, dun. Ba, 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 da, da, da. I just noticed the Pokeballs on the screen behind her. Oh, come on, Eric. Stop yawning. Get it together, man. About 2,000 years ago, this region came under the rule of the Paldean Empire. Historical accounts describe the Paldean Emperor as being quite the dictator. This emperor also zealously believed that believed the legend of the treasure that rests deep within area zero it's mentioned that the civilizations of our ancestors were not as developed as ours is today people back then were far more likely to believe in mysterious legends magic and beings beyond human comprehension in an attempt to gain the power to stand against paldea's neighboring countries the emperor sent people in droves to join the hunt for fabled treasure in area zero Approximately how many years ago was the Pelican ever going to enter this region? You just said a thousand. What? One thousand years ago, the Paladin Empire had already began to eclipse. Two thousand years ago. 
However, it is said that not a single adventurer sent out by the Emperor ever reached the depths of Area Zero. Was it the punishing journey itself that barred their way, or perhaps some unknown creature? The resounding failure of this great error, era of exploration almost certainly heightened the air of mystery surrounding the crater. Area Zero's great era of explore, exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This area lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was able to venture all the way to the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Having poured much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero, for so long the Paldan Empire fell into decline. 2,000 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldea as we know it today. You know, it's very funny. This just screams that they're going to make another Legends game and base it around Paldea, which I'm all for. That would be interesting if that was the new standard. Make a new generation of modern Pokemon and then do an ancient version too. That'd be interesting. I'd be on board with that. This very academy where you're now filling your young minds with knowledge was also apparently established at that time. In fact, this school building, though certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was when it was built so long ago. You said a hundred. Life is beginning to be taught, eh? All day. No, oh, I always put a T in there. Whoa, it's way in. What's the name of the geological formation of the center of Paldea region? In the great crater. What was long believed to rest the depths? That'd be treasure? How many years ago did the Pilot of the River rule? Two, I believe. Oh, crap. How many years ago was this academy built? Uh, I was just... We just went through this and I've already forgot. 807? Those seeking uh, blank need to look no further than the grapes of Paldea. Ah, crap. 
Ale... Man, I probably failed. Four out of five questions correctly, huh? What comes after midterms, huh? History four. So it does keep going. Allow me to tell you an old fairy tale that has been passed down in Paldea for generations. Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from, a, from other countries. One day, a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. The merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. Four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, and a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leapt for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. What do you think the tablets were? Uh, wooden planks for riding on? For the king to consider these paper substitute, uh, substitutes treasures, they must have been of superb quality. Or perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. They said that a terrible disaster rained down upon his castle, reducing it to rubble and on. Oh no! I want to know more! This mysterious crater captured the imaginations of many, including the former Paldean Emperor. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Paldea's best and brightest. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of team members was the name of a man who was an author, brilliant natural historian, Heath. After returning from the expedition to Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. Oh yeah, they're making a Legends game for this for sure. For sure. This record is now known as the Violet Book. I began to call Heath the liar. Even the truth of the expedition making it to the bottom of the crater it was called into question. The Violet Book was 
Condemned to the shelves of used bookstores is just another book of wild paranormal stories. Bet you didn't know you'd be going to school at the beginning of this episode, did you? In this last class of ours, I shall fill your minds with the history of the terrestrial phenomena. Technology behind the Terra Orbs has its origins in Area Zero. Even after the Area Zero expedition supposedly reached the crater's deepest depths, others reached... Others continued to explore that area. And around 140 years ago, Pokemon cloaked in mysterious light were discovered there. As you may have already guessed, these were, in fact, terrestrialized Pokemon. However, when those who discovered these Pokemon brought them out of Area Zero, life faded, and the terrestrial phenomenon remained a mystery for quite some time. However, ten years ago, ah, uh, might as well be present day, a certain someone you have definitely heard of unraveled this mystery. This mystery. This mysterious. Oh, so early to be doing all this reading. Approximately 10 years ago, a professor named Toro unraveled the mystery of the terrestrial phenomenon. He discovered that shining crystals down in Area Zero, or rather the energy they emit, is what causes Pokemon to terrestrialize. This led the professor to invent Terra Orb technology and to develop a particular use for it, or a practical use for it. This technology was then shared with both the Pokemon League and our Academy. I want to know more. Eh. Itchy. History final. Bomb, bomb, bomb. What was the area of the Great Crater? Area Zero. What is the area within the Great Crater call? Okay. The prayer. How many years ago was the Academy founded? You asked me this earlier. Which of these did not appear in the fairy tale about the four treasures? I don't remember anything about a fan. Area. What team's activities? That'd be Heath. Two years ago, the professor. Ken. So each one of the four legendaries that we caught today has something to do. Okay, that's starting to make a lot more sense. So this man appeared from the east, the far east, China, brought in these 
items. And the Emperor, being so enthralled with them, took them all. And they either turned into Pokemon or were already Pokemon. How'd I do? Four out of five again. I gotta be getting uh, the age of the Academy wrong. And it has disappeared from the lineup, so that is all the history that we can take. I'll do the rest of these off camera. You guys don't have to really worry about that. Uh, the great tournament that they talked about, I had to do off camera to, to rush to get to the Charizard stuff. Um, what it does is it just picks from a pool of both the staff and the students. There was not really any major story or plot elements there. Um, at this point... There really isn't anything left to do but to do the terrestrializing Pokemon stuff, the raids. And uh, I'm sure over the course of the next two to three years, they will release special Pokemon during the raids. Um, to see if there's any active over here. I also figured out that this means that there's an outbreak. You see how this one's glowing when the others aren't? I think that means it's a five or six star or something. I don't remember exactly. I'm not seeing any black star spots. Let's fly here. I also had to rebattle all the gym leaders, which... Again, there was no major plot or story elements there. It was just about getting it done, so. Um, you cannot re-challenge the Elite Four in this game like you've always been able to do, but that's fine at the end of the day because you can go back and refight the gym leaders and do these tournament at the Academy as many times as you like. And that helps with grinding your levels. Having a little trouble getting up over the ledge there, aren't we? Winky! So yeah, the only thing really left to do is to shiny hunt and, uh... The raids. This has been a pretty ma amazing adventure. Pretty excited to see where the future of Pokemon goes. Okay. What's the other one? Uh, I'm not gonna make it! <laughs> Well, we captured everything that we wanted to capture. We battled everything that we wanted to battle. We've gotten all the lore and all the story elements done. Hey, I don't know what else there is to do, except for take a big Big break. Work on some other things. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this Pokemon adventure. I know I've talked shit about some of the past Pokemon games, but all in all, Pokemon is definitely really important to me. It's always been one of my favorite things to play. And I know I've done a lot of Pokemon series, you know, on the show, on my YouTube channel. And I don't think that's going to change going forward. I think I'm always going to come back to Pokemon. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Whee! 
See you guys next time.